Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be making Bartholo cartridges and uh, on the display here, uh, the bullet on the end, this is an original Bartholo bullet and uh, beside that is a Johnson and & Dow and you can see how the bullet was quite large. This one here is from Gettysburg and it's 258 or 59 grains and uh, this one here is a 3D printed version of this bullet with a printed powder charge and silk wrapped around it. So that's what the original one would look like right here. This is a uh, 25 grain Johnson & Dow uh, with a Johnson & Dow bullet. And this has a different type of silk, which I'll talk about the silks later. Uh, but the silk here is like it's a shirt silk and this here is a chiffon silk and this one here is called organza silk and any of the silks here that have color these are old scarves from the thrift store so these two here uh, this one here is a uh, cartridge made with the english cur bullet and the one here on the end is the uh, 58 caliber rifle cartridge. And uh, these were packaged in, well, the pistol cartridges were packaged in little uh, matchbox style boxes. And they had a, like a slide out tray. And so the that's a 44. Uh, the 36s, they were white. And the 31s were in a blue box like that. And I don't have a 31 here. I forgot to put that on. But these are even smaller. These are very tiny. I put wax paper on my boxes just to tidy them up a little bit better. So that's the 31 right there. So they're quite small. They're about a little over an inch long. And so the first step in uh, making these cartridges is uh, you need a mold to form the what they call a powder cake. And so the molds I'm using are 3D printed. These are uh, Basically, uh, the hole here is the same diameter as the bullet on one side. And there's a two degree taper. And so this would be the bottom side of the cartridge. So it would be something like this. And when I mold them, I mold them upside down. So the bullet side faces down on the table like this. And that's so uh, the... Uh, this surface is flat when you glue the bullet to it and it helps uh, hold it in there. makes a nicer cartridge and the, the glue bonds a lot better. So there's a 3D printed mold. There's also a funnel. So the funnel goes on the, on the bottom like that. And then there's a pusher here. This is to push, compress the powder. And there's a little plate here that's used to help pop them out. So I'll show you that in a little bit. And uh, so first step is uh, you want to wax the inside of that. So what I do is I take my, uh, I just take my uh, bullet lube here and I just kind of, you can see it's a little bit of powder left over. Kind of turns things black. But kind of just give that a good coating on the inside there like that. Doesn't take a whole lot. And so, <clears throat> put my lid here. And so that would be facing down. The large hole goes down. That's for the bullet side. Uh, then the funnel goes on top like this. And, uh... <clears throat> This is for a 20 grain uh, powder charge. That's what the original Barclays had. So I'm going to make one of those today. 
and you'll need a powder scale to weigh the powder and then to bind the uh, powder together I'm using nitrocellulose glue this is what it looks like right out of the uh, out of the can and I get this from Three Rivers Archery and so it's like got the consistency of honey which is too thick to mix it doesn't mix very well this way uh, the only time I use this is when I glue the bullet to the powder cake other than that uh, this needs to be thinned out so <clears throat> what I did was I took uh, took this glue and I measured out a certain amount in grains on my scale and left it dry and uh, so I'd measure before it dried and then after it dried and I would determine how much solvent is in this uh, glue and from what I found was it's about two parts solvent to one part glue and so basically I just double the solvent content um, of the glue right out of the can and so uh, for an example if I have a hundred grains of, of glue um, 33 of that would be the nitrocellulose and 66 of that would be the solvent so I just add another 66 grains of acetone to it and that will thin it out to about a 4 to 1 ratio and uh, <clears throat> that's what's in this jar here and uh, it's, it's very thin and watery so I this jar is for painting you'll need it to to uh, coat the outside of the finished uh, cartridge to waterproof it and it helps hold everything together better and so I have a jar of that this is four to one and then I got a small squeeze bottle it's like a dropper bottle this is also four to one and so the next step here is to measure out the powder you'll need a scale and so to measure that to measure and mix it I, I uh, use this piece of plastic it's part of a file divider or something uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, milk jug material but the glue doesn't stick to it very well so uh, you just kind of mix it on here and then the edges are bent up so it kind of acts as a funnel so you can kind of scrape it down into the into the mold and so that would go on the scale and you'd have to zero it out and so I'm going to measure this will be 20 grains of 3F black powder this is Schutzen and so that's 20 grains and I kind of shake it around a little bit, kind of spread it out. And uh, <clears throat> there's a ratio of glue to the powder. So what I do is I take the powder charge and divide that by five. So 20 divided by five is four grains of glue to 20 grains of powder. And so I've done... Uh, six to one but it just kind of doesn't wet and hold together very well you can go more if you want but i find five to one works really well for it it's not too much um, it's just enough basically uh, so basically then you have to go to 24 grains total and drop it all around the powder I found this to be the easiest method for making the adding the glue. I've tried little spoons and it just doesn't work. Uh, so there I got 24 greens. And so I don't need this anymore. And I got a tongue depressor here. It's kind of shaped a certain way. It doesn't matter, but find it easier to mix this way. So you kind of kind of spread this around and you have to work quick this dries pretty fast 
Uh, I try to keep it in the biggest lump I can. If it's spread out, it will dry super quick. And uh, before you know it, so it'll kind of look kind of wetted through. Kind of looks like uh, asphalt in a way. And I kind of push as much of it as I can towards the funnel like that. And then and pieces always little pieces go flying. It's kind of hard to keep everything. There's always there's always spillage. I feel like that. Okay, and then uh, next step is that's all going to be pushed down into the mold. So I have a little brass uh, rod here with a knob on it and just kind of push it down in. And this part of the process is when the uh, original factory in Philadelphia exploded. Uh, they originally used, they have a big brass, the original, the way they made them was they had a brass mold with like 24 or 5 holes. They would dump it in and spread it out. And then they would take a hammer and a mallet with an iron bar and kind of hit each one to compress it. And from hitting it, the friction uh, build up and caused an explosion in the molding room and uh, that caused the a chain reaction which basically went throughout the factory and blew the whole thing up I think it killed uh, like 78 people most of them are young women in the factory and so it's an interesting story look it up uh, that's probably the what made this cartridge basically famous is the the factory blowing up and so after it's kind of packed in there you want to lift the funnel off so you'll be left with something like this and uh just take a little take a little kind of push this in as hard as you can to compress the powder so in a, in a, on the second factory, they went from the hammer, from the mallet and the iron bar to a screw press to do this process. So just press that in and then it'll sit about a millimeter below the mold here. And then I just kind of slide it around a little bit and pop it off. So that's the bullet side. And this is the bottom. And then I usually let them sit like this. Uh, they dry fast. So that way it'll dry out this side and that side. And if you dry it like this, it just dries out the top. I just found it dries faster this way. And I usually let them sit about a half hour or so. Uh, you can't let them sit overnight. They actually, as they dry, they shrink a little bit and they pop out easier. So if you're having a hard time popping one out, just wait. It'll, it'll probably be easier uh, if you wait a little bit longer. If you pop it out too early, it'll be soft and mushy in the middle and kind of fall apart. So at least a half an hour, an hour or so. Uh, I, I have a whole bunch of these, so I basically do a whole batch of like 12 or more. And then when they're all dry, I'll just go along and pop them all out. Uh, <clears throat> so after it's dry... You know, you have this, and there's a little, like, I call it a push pad, and you kind of just sit it in there like this, and then just take your pusher, kind of push them down, and they'll, and they'll pop right out pretty easy. But these have been drying for at least a day, so, um, and then you can just 
make a bunch of these ahead of time too you know you don't have to make everything all at one time and so i'll just uh make a whole bunch of them like this and kind of pop them out So after you have a couple of the bunch of them made, then you gotta assemble it. And uh, <clears throat> I use a my my bullet holder for that. Kind of. Well, you don't need to use it for this, but it kind of helps. And then you need the thick glue. This is the right out of the can. And this stuff stinks all to high heaven. There's a lot of acetone in it, so this needs to be done in a well-ventilated area. And uh, just put a little dab on your bullet. Take your powder charge and kind of just stick it on there. Center it up the best you can. Some of the originals are really crooked and offset, so they don't got to be perfect. The more centered the better so you have something like this let that dry a little bit uh, right now they're kind of fragile if you bump this this will probably pop off so let that dry and i usually kind of i let them dry like this that way the weight of the bullet kind of holds it down in place and so when you're done the next step here is putting the silk on and for that, I used the thinned out uh, four to one ratio of glue and you know, small paintbrush. Now on this brush, I cut the ends off. Uh, I found it's better to have short, stiff kind of bristles on it. And I forgot to talk about the silk, so I'm not going to do this yet. I need to, there's different types of silk here. I almost forgot that. So... On these bullets here, uh, the easiest silk to use is this organza silk. Uh, it is a stiff, it looks like this. It is a very st stiff, uh, thin silk. And silk is measured in the thickness or weight of it is in mom, M O M M E, it's Japanese. And so this is about five or five and a half mom, which is probably the the thinnest that you can probably get. And this is very stiff. And then so this is the easiest to cut. Uh, to cut this, I just use a metal ruler with a razor blade and it slices through. Uh, there aren't too many little things coming off the sides. Uh, it's kind of... The stiffness makes it hard to uh, uh, fold around the or wrap around the bullet. It depends on the bullet design, really. I'll show you that later here. And so, but this is the easiest to work with, easiest to cut. Uh, it's the thinnest there is that I could find. And so, you can use this if you want to get an, like a white, consistent color. Uh, the other kind is called chiffon silk. It's like this. You can see it's really like this is this is like paper, and this is really flowy and soft. Uh, this is extremely hard to cut. To cut this, I have to use a rotary cutter, one of these, and uh, even then, it can be a pain in the butt at times. So I got one of those clear quilting kind of rulers and I kind of lay it on cardboard and kind of slice it. And this has a lot of little stringers come off of it here. You can see how there's a lot of little threads everywhere. That's the other thing that's kind of a pain with it. But it wraps really nice. 
Uh, it'll fold and wrap into the contours of, the, of your bullet and your powder really nice. And so I would use this for like uh, the English Kerr or the, uh, the, the mini ball, something like that. Or like this one here where it wraps all the way up around the band on the bullet. So you need something that conforms to the bullet. Use a chiffon. If you don't, I would go with the organza silk. And so the other source of silk I found was old scars. If you don't care about the color or anything. Uh, but it needs to be a certain type of scarf. So uh, if you look on this scarf here that there is like stripes woven into the fabric. So there's like a open mesh uh, weave and then there's a really tight weave. So what I would do is I would trim out the open mesh and use this part of it. And one scarf will be enough to do probably a couple hundred cartridges. It doesn't take much. But uh, as far as silk goes, you want something very thin. Uh, most of these are about one and a half to two thousandths thick. And you want something that you can, like a mesh that you can actually paint the glue through it. And... Uh, that works the best. Something thick and dense, it'll just kind of lay on top and won't get soaked through very well. So that's the other source of uh, kind of cheap silk. I mean, I think I don't think I paid more than a dollar for any scarf that I found at the thrift store. And so, <clears throat> next step here is, is gluing the silk on. And so, to do that, use the thin uh, 4 to 1 ratio of glue. And I'm going to be using the organza, organza silk. That's the stiff stuff here for this cartridge. And so, you know, this... this uh, this will, if you use it on this, if it's a straight flat seam, I would use this. It's so much easier. Put a little bit on one spot. Take your silk. Kind of. Getting it started is the hard part. Kind of paint that down like that. Uh, I used a piece too wide. That's I think that's a half inch wide. I want to get a thinner piece here. Yeah, this will work better. So kind of stick it down, kind of paint it, paint right through the silk itself. And let it let that little spot dry, and then take the silk and kind of so these Johnson and Dow bullets are kind of nice and flat, so I'm gonna just wrap it around like that and pull it tight. Then go back to where the two where the where it meets and kind of paint more through the silk yeah i don't apply the glue i kind of just paint through everything find that easier and once that's dry you can kind of flip that back i need a sharp pair of scissors here where the ends are nice and sharp and this stuff trims a lot easier too i mean it cuts this silk cuts really well it cuts like paper basically the other stuff is kind of a pain, but it kind of wraps better, I guess. And so after that's done, and you can just paint through the silk itself. Kind of just...
Okay, so the silk's been painted through, and then the final step here is to just to paint the rest of it. And don't forget the bottom. I kind of just dab that on. So it pretty much dries pretty quick and then if there's a little bit of extra glue here I kind of just peel that off my fingers before it dries completely. There's always a little string popping off somewhere so I kind of just trim that off. But that's pretty much the finished cartridge Johnson & Dow with the organza silk. And uh, the next one here is going to be a the English Kerr bullet. And so I'm going to be using a different silk. I'm going to be using the, uh, let's see, the chiffon silk. Like, so this is kind of really floppy. And you can see all the little strings, all the stringers come on off of it. But, uh, so for that, kind of just same process, paint one little spot. And just kind of stick it down where you want it. Kind of paint through it'll kind of turn clear and transparent it's almost like fiberglassing in a way or like kind of just paint through the silk and then blow on it it'll just it'll dry in a couple seconds dry enough so you can tug on it and it's not going to move and then it's the same way and just wrap it around and just pull it tight And here, you, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pulling it down into the, the lube groove and down around that bottom uh, uh, band there on the bullet. I just kind of hold it something like this. Oops, that ain't good. Pull a little too tight on that. Oh, come on now. I've done this a million freaking times. Now all of a sudden I got problems. Right in the middle of the video. Quick enough worse. Actually, it's because I got the start and needs need to put the start here at the top. So basically, easier to paint it that way.
Okay, so I'm going to do another one of these. That one turned out terrible for some reason. Yeah, you can see all the little stringers running off of this uh, type of silk. So I'm going to pull a tiny little fly running around here too at the same time. So that's about it. Now yeah, there's a little stringers coming off. Trim that off. And so next, the only thing left to do is to uh, let this dry, dip it in wax, and then uh, put it in a box and take it to the range and have some fun. Thanks for watching.